A group of archaeologists is sponsored to go on a trip to the past to find a professor, who was sent back to the past. They accidentally participate in the war between England and France. How can they survive and return to their time? Please watch the movie together. A man in medieval attire can be seen running away from a sword-wielding medieval warrior in a forest when he suddenly appears in the desert in front of a modern car. It almost runs him over but it stops and the driver runs over to help the man who utters the words Castlegard. In the next shot he's seen with slash wounds on his body being reanimated in an ER. Unfortunately the doctors aren't able to save him. Just as the doctor explains to the sheriff that they can't identify the man who only had a medallion around his neck. Gordon from the ITC walks into the hospital to retrieve his body. His boss and eccentric billionaire Doniger tells him to collect all the data the doctors have on their man as well and asks Gordon if he returned alone. Doniger and his lead scientist Kramer have no idea how the man ended up in the desert. Meanwhile the lead archaeologist Professor Johnston explains the history of the Castlegard dig to the newest additions to his team. The English in La Roque defeated by the French when Lord Oliver decided to hang one of the French noblewomen, Lady Clare. As Merrick explains at this move by the English whipped Clare's brother that was leading the French and his forces into a frenzy strong enough to conquer the stronghold of La Roque and win the battle. That night as Johnston is getting ready for his meeting with Doniger who's funding the dig. His son Chris comes over to help and say goodbye. Johnston voices his suspicions about the billionaire to Chris uncertain why he's funding them and how he gets all the tips on the archaeological location that he's been feeding the professor. The next day Chris talks to Merrick who tells him about a sarcophagus they found on the location of a couple that was buried together. He sees it as very romantic showing him that the couple is carved holding hands. Merrick also says that the man was carved in the sarcophagus without one ear. His passion for the stories of the people involved in the Battle of Castlegard helps Chris understand what is so interesting about history and archaeology as well. Suddenly there is a cave-in at the monastery on the site, and all of the archaeologists flock to investigate what was unearthed. Since Kate is the one that worked on the location she and Merrick go down into the hole. Inside they find some untouched documents wrapped in oilskin and a purposely damaged stone carving. Before they leave the monastery Merrick also finds a modern-day bifocal lens. In the next sequence Stern tells them that they weren't invented by the 1700s and they have no business being in a location that was never excavated before. To make things weirder he also shows Kate and Merrick the documents, which they found have Professor Johnston's signature on them along with the words, help me, written on them. The mystery is that the dating on the ink places it at 600 years old. Chris calls Doniger to find out where his dad is and the billionaire tells him that he'll send a plane for him and his dad's team. In the next shot Gordon and Kramer welcome them to the research center of the ITC or International Technological Society in New Mexico. Kramer explains that the center is working on a way to send 3D objects from one place to another using a special machine. He tells them that they made the machine work but that they didn't get the result they were hoping for. When they tried to send something from their lab to a twin machine in another one, the object disappeared and then reappeared in their lab. That's when they discovered that the objects they were sending actually got sent back in time to 14th century Castlegard in France. The ITC accidentally discovered a wormhole linking their machine to that exact place and time in history. When Doniger arrives he explains that they didn't send his father's glasses and documents to the 14th century but his father. He needs the team's help to get him back because they need people that are familiar with that historical period. Merrick realizes that Doniger has been funding their dig to understand why the wormhole is locked to that particular place and time. Doniger isn't too willing to answer all of their questions about the machine, and by sheer force of urgency, he makes the team agree to go back in time to Castlegard to find the professor. Gordon walks in to get them prepared, and in a short amount of time the team is already changed in medieval clothes and is getting into the machine with Gordon and two of his men. Stern will stay back and monitor them from the present. Before they go inside Kramer gives them special markers that will be their way of getting back home. However he and Doniger don't give them all the information about the dangers of the trip. The time travelers get into the machine, and in a few excruciating moments of pain, they find themselves into the French wilderness of the 14th century. Gordon tells the team how to use the markers to see the remaining time they have and informs them that the only way to use them to get back home is to find a clearing. Immediately they get into some trouble with the English forces as a French person runs up to them telling them to hide. One of Gordon's men is killed instantly and when the other one gets surrounded, he activates a grenade and presses his marker. He gets back to the present and the grenade activates destroying the machine. 
Doniger and his team have no idea what has happened to the rest of them or how they will get them back to the present. Back in the 14th century the team separates with one part staying behind to hide and Merrick running away to hide. He happens to hide in the same location as the woman they saw previously in the woods. The English writers find the location but get attacked by the French in time not to discover them hiding. Merrick and the Frenchwoman escape reuniting with the rest of the team, just as they arrive at the small village of Castlegard. Suddenly the archaeologists realize that the date they were brought back to is the day the French attack La Roque, and the entire place will be burned to the ground by the night. Gordon says that just means they need to find the professor faster. In the future Stern consults with Kramer about the possibility of fixing the machine and get his team back. Kramer doesn't have a particularly optimistic outlook of the situation, but they will keep trying regardless until the markers holding the wormhole open are still active. In the 14th century the team gushes when they see the actual building they were working on as it was in reality. Suddenly an English troop finds them and captures them taking them to Lord Oliver. There's a whole ordeal when he hears their accents so Merrick tells him that they're Scottish. With who the English happen to be at war too. The main problem is when he hears Francois speak with a French accent and he orders one of his men to kill him. The rest of them are taken as prisoners and put in the same location as Professor Johnston. He's naturally happy to see them and explains that the English found him in the monastery, but he convinced Oliver that he was a magister capable of providing him with a new kind of weapon. The weapon is Greek fire which makes a liquid fire so intense that even water can't extinguish it. Merrick and Kate are worried because such a powerful weapon can give the English advantage in the battle and even provide the means of altering the future. They suddenly realize that if they are brought up to La Roque, they are as good as dead once the place is sealed off for battle so they need to escape fast. Gordon tells them that they need to get to a clearing near the village to be able to use the markers which Kate says show that they only have four hours left. Kate concocts a plan to climb out of the room through the roof and open the doors from outside and Merrick sees that the English have captured the Frenchwoman that helped them twice already. Being a very good climber Kate manages to get herself on the other side of the building via the roof and then gets inside through a window. To get to the door she's forced to kill one of the guards then release the rest of the team. Merrick decides to help the Frenchwoman, and they separate. He kills her guard but before he can set her free, Merrick is attacked by Dakir one of Oliver's closest men. Merrick escapes him and gets into the Frenchwoman's room, where she tells him to help her break out through the wall. While they make a hole in it Dakir rips through the door, they escape just in the nick of time. The rest of the team follows Gordon as they try to get back to the future, but things are not looking great for the machine. Kramer and the others are happy that at least they know their people are still alive. In the past Chris fights with Gordon thinking that he's trying to get back and leave them behind. Gordon has figured out that his marker isn't working so he tells Kate to press hers. Unfortunately neither does that one. They walk away from the clearing to hide because the English are after them. Meanwhile Merrick and the woman escape from Castlegard through the river and he makes a move on her. Suddenly the French find them and Merrick finds out that the woman is actually Lady Claire. Before the troop takes them back to the rest of the forces they are attacked by Dakir and his men. They manage to escape while the rest of the team hide in the village, where they are quickly found by the English. Kate and Chris escape the village but the Professor and Gordon are captured by the troop. Claire and Merrick are taken back to the French forces hideout where her brother Lord Arnott is waiting for her. When he finds that Merrick saved the life of one of his men Arnott spares his life even though he's Scottish. Merrick thinks that he can save Claire's life too if he tells her brother to keep her safe and protected from the English. He asks Arnott for a horse and weapon to go back for the rest of his team, disregarding Claire's warning about the dangers of doing it. The two of them say farewell and kiss while Arnott goes to get him what he asked for. Merrick gets on a horse and leaves unaware that the English have found the camp and are sending an assassin to kill Arnott. In the meantime Kate and Chris hide in the forest thinking of a way to save his father. Kate remembers the tunnels in the monastery that lead to La Roque and convinces Chris that they should try to get to the stronghold from there. Simultaneously Gordon and the Professor are being taken away from an already burning Castlegard and taken to La Roque through the forest while Merrick rides out to find them. However he doesn't know that he's being followed by the English. The other English troop gets to the French camp and attacks them. Arnott manages to fight them off but Claire escapes again. At the same time Dakir captures Merrick and takes away his marker. Dakir rides to the English cordon moving to La Roque and drops Merrick in the cart pulling the Professor and Gordon. Suddenly Dakir reveals that he's actually Decker one of Gordon's men that didn't make it back to the future during his last trip. He's made a life for himself in the past and isn't willing to come back to the future. Angry at Gordon for leaving him behind Dakir kills him and leaves his body to be trampled in the middle of the road to the surprise of Merrick and the Professor. 
The two men realize that without Gordon Chris and Kate, they've lost all of the markers for getting back home. Dakir tells them about the cost the travel through the wormhole has on their body. Aware that he can't make any more trips lest he ends up like the man from the beginning of the film. In that sense he says that if they work with him they can all rise in Oliver's favor and have a nice life in the past. Kate and Chris arrive at the monastery at the foot of the La Roque stronghold and convince the monks to let them in because they are the professor's friends. Simultaneously the English arrive at the stronghold and Akir gets the prisoners to work on the Greek fire immediately, telling them that Oliver wants a demonstration of the weapon before nightfall. The professor and Merrick see that they were provided with all the materials needed for the weapon when Johnston has a crisis of conscience realizing that it might influence the course of history. Merrick tells him that by saving Claire he might have already done that so they get to work to at least save themselves. In the meantime Kate and Chris find the chamber that she was working on when one of the monks tells them that Arnott is getting ready to attack the stronghold. This prompts them to hurry to find the tunnels so they go under the monastery. Down there Kate figures out where the tunnel is hiding when she sees the stone carving that was damaged when she found it in the future. She grabs a tool and starts breaking it down while Chris holds back the monks. He helps her push through the stone in the end and they find the tunnel. Before they get inside she tells one of the monks to find or not and inform him about what they found. She and Chris get inside to find the opening on the other side while the professor and Merrick work on the Greek fire. The French forces are ready and attack the stronghold with trebuchets, but Oliver isn't worried yet because he's waiting for his special weapon. The professor and Merrick come up to him ready for their demonstration. While the French are still firing at La Roque Merrick lights the Greek fire and hits one of their trebuchets. At first it looks as if the weapon has done little damage getting Oliver angry because he thinks it doesn't work. As the French try to extinguish the fire with water it keeps getting worse spreading everywhere. The more water the more fire. Oliver realizes how the weapon actually works, so he orders all the cannons to be loaded with Greek fire. Simultaneously Arnott rallies his troops for battle preparing to storm the stronghold, while Oliver gets his archers on the battlements. In the future Doniger argues with Kramer that they haven't gotten the machine to high enough efficiency to work properly. Stern and Kramer think that it's sufficient to try and get the team back but Doniger doesn't want to risk it. Kramer confronts him about it in private, but as they argue Doniger pushes him hurting him badly. The battle in the past proceeds with archers firing from each side of the line with both sides taking significant damage. Oliver fires night arrows at the French decimating Arnott's forces before they can fire again. Arnott calls his troops to retreat when he suddenly gets informed about the tunnels under the monastery to get to La Roque. He leaves instructions for his troops and rides to the monastery, arriving just as Kate and Chris hit a dead end in the tunnel. La Roque keeps getting hit by the French trebuchets, so Oliver orders for his special surprise to be brought out. Merrick sees that they have recaptured Claire and are getting ready to hang her from the battlements for everyone to see if Arnott doesn't stop the siege. The professor tells Merrick that history can't be changed but Merrick feels otherwise. He goes outside and threatens Oliver that he'll blow their entire arsenal of Greek fire away if they don't release Claire. However Dakir sees through his bluff knowing that if he ignites the fire Merrick will kill everyone including Claire. So he suspects he won't actually do it. Merrick doesn't back down though. He lights the arsenal and runs away from the explosion which tears apart the stronghold to the joy of the French who get ready to storm it. It also makes an opening in the tunnels convincing or not that Kate and Chris are actually on his side. He and his men enter La Roque as his forces storm it from outside. Oliver isn't giving up still and when he sees Arnott inside the stronghold he orders his men to kill Claire. A battle commences in which Arnott's archers manage to save Claire and Kate and Chris find the professor. La Roque soon turns into chaos as the team is trying to find Merrick so they could escape. Oliver and Arnott finally get to fight pretty much matching in force. As Merrick finds Claire, Dakir appears ready to kill them but Merrick pushes him down the stairs tumbling down with him. In the meantime Chris takes down Oliver to give Arnott the advantage over him while Kate and the professor try to find a way out. As Oliver and Chris fight Arnott sneaks up behind the Lord and kills him so Chris can join his team. The French breach the doors of the stronghold giving the team a clear exit. Merrick and Dakir fight when Dakir cuts off his ear making Merrick realize that he was the knight buried in the sarcophagus with a noblewoman he unearthed in the future. He succeeds in taking him down as Chris comes looking for him. Merrick tells him that he will stay in the past but finds his marker on Dakir and gives it to Chris so they can go back home without him. He will stay with Claire. In the future Stern locks himself in the main operating room for the machine getting it ready for the last remaining minute in which the team can come back. Doniger however enters the room with the machine to disable it. Chris reunites with his father and Kate on a clearing with a few Englishmen on his tail, and they activate the last remaining marker before they can get to him. 
Simultaneously Doniger enters the machine, as it activates to get the team back and gets locked inside. As they are being brought back to the future Doniger gets sent back to the past without a marker. He is immediately killed by the men chasing after Chris. Some time later the professor continues working on the Castlegard dig, when they come across the sarcophagus again. In the last moments of the film what remained of the team realizes that he had a happy life with Claire in the past. The movie ends here, goodbye and see you again.